Let's, Let's get started, started since, since already, already we are already behind the schedule. So, so I'm Chang Min from Galia, an open, open source consultant company. Today, Today I'm, I'm going to talk about the how Sked EXT can be used to improve the gaming experience on the Steam Deck. Uh, particularly, I'm going, going to uh, share the ideas behind the SCX LABD scheduler. I go, go to the next slide. slide. Okay. okay. So, so this, this is about basically the LAVD scheduler, scheduler which stands, stands for latency criticality aware uh, of virtual deadline scheduling algorithm. And basically, the LAVD scheduler is the SCADX uh, basis scheduler inspired by the gaming workload characteristics. So its main target is the game, especially uh, running, running on a Steam Deck. And the, as, as the LAVD, LAVD name implies, it actually, actually uh, used the latency criticality. Uh, of a task, task as a main, main factor, factor to making a scheduling decision. And, and that latency criticality that we're going to try from, from by analyzing the game workload characteristics. And also, and also uh, especially in, in terms of the handheld device, device, the battery consumption is really important. important. So, so at any rate, it knows the uh, course, uh, handles the course differently, so it uh, knows the uh, uh, heterogeneous course. course. And also, and also it, it it further, in order to further optimize the performance and battery consumption, consumption they actually adapt the scheduling policy according to the usage pattern. pattern. So before, before diving into, into the details of the LAVD scheduling algorithm, algorithm, let's first uh, describe clear the goals and the non-goals. We, we want to be the best gaming, provide the best gaming experience on the Linux platform in general. general. And not, not only, the, only, only for the Steam Deck, Deck. and more, more especially, we want to provide high game performance, performance without, without having, having the stuttering. So, so, so that, that basically, basically means, means that, that we want to achieve high average FPS, but, but and also, also we, we want to uh, maximize low 1% FPS, so frame per so second. So, so we, we want to achieve high FPS without, without certain API FPS FPS dip. So, so from, from the more general server workload uh, uh, terms, we, we want to maximize throughput while minimizing minimize the tail latency. latency. Even, Even though, though we are uh, targeting for the gaming, gaming workload, we still want to provide a reasonably good performance across various workload and hardware combinations. combinations. But, but the, the being the fastest schedule for the server workload were the being, being the best general, general post scheduler is, is not the current goal of a VD scheduler. So, so in order to uh, understand the, the design, design decision that, that I made for the LAVD, let's uh, briefly let me briefly discuss about the uh, gaming, gaming workload characteristics. We did, we did a pretty uh, good, good amount of the uh, workload characterization study, how, how the game works, especially, especially the scheduler's point of view. And I just, I just bring only two points, which are, I think, I think the most relevant and important. The first, the first important fact is that the test, test runs, runs for very short period, period of time. time. So, so roughly speaking, the once, once a test is scheduled, it just, just schedules uh, uh, burns a few cycles, cycles 100, 100, 100 and 200 microseconds on average, average and, and then just to sleep, sleep right? right? So the graph on the right hand side actually shows actually shows that the average runtime per schedule across the different tests, and, and you can, can see most of the most of the cases uh, move down. Uh, Chengu, we lost your voice. Uh, can you hear me? We still can't hear you. Okay. okay. So, so the first, first important, important property is that, that the average execution time per schedule is very short. It's just uh, 100 or 200 microsecond scale. scale. And the, 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 the graph on the right hand side, side shows the, uh, the, the distribution of the uh, runtime run schedule, schedule across the tests. As, as you can, can see, most of the tests are actually, actually spend less than a millisecond, and, and most of them are just spend 100 or 200, 200 microseconds scale. scale. And, and then, then just, just sleep. sleep. So, so you know, know, it is really important, important to understand, understand what, what this test is doing, doing for that short period of time, time and then why they actually sleep. So, so the, the reason, reason is that, that in order to finish just, just one, one user level job, job, such as the updating a frame, frame uh, given, given the user input, input many, many tests, tests are related and operate each other. other. So, so this, this graph shows, actually shows that the, uh, 
waker and waiter relationship across the tasks. That basically means that the and this is the another real uh, task uh, waker and wake up relationship among among tasks in the real game, the Cyberpunk 2077. And, and as you can, can see, see here, here right, the wine so server is the center of the uh, all in the test, test graph. graph. And, and uh, the game draft, game engine draft, and game draft, and wine related are tightly connected with the wine server. Which basically, which basically means, means that, that if there is a scheduling delay that happens uh, in the wine, wine server, that actually cascading uh, delays the execution of all the related tasks. tasks. So, so scheduling delay in the critical class of the task task graph is really uh, critical. critical. So, so that, that actually entails the, the uh, latency spike, spike and, and the spike of the frame time, time and, and pose the low low one percent uh, frame per second. second. So, so having, having this uh, in mind, mind from, from the LED point, point of view, scheduling the uh, let me describe the key ideas of the LED scheduling algorithm. So essentially, the, the, from the LED and, and most of the uh, deadline based scheduling algorithm point of view, the scheduling is nothing but given, given the runnable task, task, we want it to design which, which task should run, run first, first, second, and so on. And then, and then once the order, order is decided, decided and how long, long the task should run. So, so essentially, from, from the technical point of view, the LED should determine task set and virtual deadline and time slice. And then let me explain how first how to decide that the virtual deadline of a task, task right? right? So, so as, as the name implies that we want to schedule, want to schedule the latency critical task, task first, then the, the question, question is how to define the latency criticality of, of the task. task. Right? So the, the, the idea, idea from the key idea, idea from the, the workload analysis, analysis is let's level task, 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 task graph. In this, this task, task graph, simplify task, task, task graph. Test A processing some job. job. And then, and then wake, wake up, up test has B, and test has B, get a job from, from test has A, and then, then processing each job, and, and then they wake, wake up test has C. C. And test has C actually processes the uh, result of the test has B. B. So the, that's, that's the wake, wake up frequency. frequency. But, but on, on the other hand, hand from, from the test has C's point of view, test has C wait for, for test has C's completion, and test has C wait for, for test has A's completion. So, so wake, wake up, up we found that the wake up frequency, frequency and wake wave frequency, wave frequency or the blocking frequency, frequency matters, matters a lot in determining the latency criticality. So, so the, the, the implication of wake up and blocking or wave frequency is that if the wake up frequency is high, that basically means I, I me, my, 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 my task, task Frequently wake, wake up the other, other tasks, that basically means I'm an important, important producer, producer in a task graph. graph. On the on other hand, hand, if we're blocking or wait frequency, frequency is very high, high then, then that I'm, I'm going, going to frequently wait for the uh, result from, from the other, other tasks, tasks, that basically means I'm, I'm an important customer, customer in a task graph. If both are high, I'm in the important task in the middle of the task graph. So, so when we actually, actually in the LAVD, LAVD, when, when we actually, actually uh, calculate the virtual, virtual deadline, deadline of a task, task the, the major, major factor is the wake, wake frequency and, and wait frequency, wait frequency or the block frequency. frequency. And, and this, that, that, that's what, what we call the pipeline factor. factor. So the, the pipeline factor, factor is the most important factor in determining the virtual deadline. deadline. So of so course, with, uh, both, both frequencies are high, high. We, we actually, actually try, try to schedule, schedule as well as possible. possible. And actually, actually the wine, wine server and many critical tasks are belong to that, that category. category. And besides, and besides that, that, we also uh, consider nice priority, priority and virtual load time, time to be somehow fair. So once, once we, we actually, actually decide the virtual load time, we should decide the time slice. The, the idea, idea of the time slice calculation, calculation is somehow similar to the CFS scheduling algorithm. So we have the concept of the calculated latency. So, so we, we want, want it to, for example, for 15 uh, milliseconds interval, we, we want, want it to schedule every, every, each and every, every single, single task uh, to run. run. So, so that, that actually helps, helps to ensure the progress, progress of all tasks task without, without starvation. starvation. So, so basically, time wise is, is the function of number, number of tasks. Task. So, so if, if the system has a more task, task we will we'll going, schedule, we're going, going to assign a short time slice. So, so the, the everybody, everybody, every task, task can make, make a forward progress, progress 
And if system has a less number of tasks, then the schedule will assign a longer time slice, so each task can enjoy the cache utility. Once the, 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 once once the deadline, deadline and the uh, time, time slice uh, calculated, then that's, that's the core of the LAD algorithm, algorithm right? right? But, but, the, uh, but, but for the uh, battery uh, power consumption, consumption the, the, the important thing is also the, uh, considering the battery power consumption. consumption. So, so in, in particular, the processor architectures are these days heterogeneous. For example, in, 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 in case of Intel, Intel, they have a performance core and an efficiency core. Armor has, has a big core and really, really core concept. concept. The, the idea, idea is that basically, basically a performance or a big core provide high performance, high performance at the sake of the a little bit more power consumption. consumption. But, but efficiency core or the real core, core it, is it is a little bit slower because due to the simple microarchitecture architectural design, design, but it actually consumes less, uh, less, uh, less power. power. So, so from, from the schedule's point, point of view, we, we have the two important questions. Question. One, One question, question is that the, when, when you should use the big core or the, or the little, little core, right? right? And, and another, another one, one is that, that practically speaking, all the CPU this is architecture that's multiple today. today. So, so especially in the likely load system, should we use the older, older cores all the time? The, the our answer, answer is, is no. Because the core has some, some optimal operating frequency range. range. So, so for example, example in this, this graph, graph uh, shows, shows that, that the access is the performance or clock frequency, frequency or, or the CPU utilization, roughly. And why access is the energy consumption? If, 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 if you, you go, go on the right, right, right side, side, so clock, clock frequency becomes higher, right, right, we, we get, a get a better performance, performance and, and, and typically the front, front of the frequency go burner, burner is the CPU utilization is high, the clock, clock frequency becomes higher, higher, and then, then we, we can, can able to get, get a better, better performance. So, so the higher fre clock, clock frequency actually uh, triggers more power consumption, consumption in the core. core. And, and if, if the clock, clock frequency becomes too high, high that basically means, means that the uh, core is turbo boosted, boosted. So they're, they're going to consume much, much more power consumption in the core. core. But on, on the other hand, hand on the other side, side the clock, clock frequency is too low, low right? right? Then the execution, execution of a job, job is, is going to be very, very long. So, so it, it also consumes more power, power in, in the on core side, side like, like outside of the CPU or, or like a memory controller, controller and something, something like that. that. So, so because, because of the tension between these two, we have, have the green zone, which is the optimal operating, operating frequency. So it so is it's a little bit the only to generalize. But, but the, in my uh, experiment on the AMD and Intel CPU, CPU, about 50% of the CPU utilization, utilization can, can easily um, uh, help, help us to land at the optimal operational operating, operating frequency range. range. So, so that, that actually uh, make, make me to come, come up with the idea, the idea of the core contraction. So, so I think it's quite simple. simple. So, so instead, instead of the uh, spread of the old job, job to the, the entire, entire CPU cores, cores right? right? Let's, Let's just use the minimum number of cores and run, run those cores in the optimal frequency range. range. For example, instead, instead of run the 16, uh, uh, utilize 16 cores in 5% CPU utilization, utilization. Let's, let's just use, use only two cores, cores and in, in, the, in the 40% CPU utilization. utilization. That, that actually uh, boosts boost the performance due to the, the high, high, high clock frequency, frequency and also, and also uh, reduces the power consumption. consumption. So, so that's, that's the basically, basically how, how we handle, handle the uh, power, power consumption. consumption. And, and another question uh, regarding, regarding the process of heterogeneity, we need, we need to answer, answer is that when, when to use big cores and, and when to use the small cores core, and, and uh, little, little cores, cores, right? right? But, but the, what, what I found, I found is, is that there is, there is no single, single correct, correct answer. answer. For example, For example if, if your, your system, system is lightly loaded, loaded let's, let's say 10% of the CPU utilization, and, and you are doing code editing using the beam and reading the PDF documentation while, while listening to the music streaming, streaming service, service right? right? So, so most, most of the red tops today, today actually, actually these has, has can be easily uh, supported by, by one, one or two, two CPUs, CPUs, right? right? So, so in, in this case, it's just, just using, using the little cores or, or essentially high twins, high twins can, can, can can stop, stop such cores. cores. So, so choosing, choosing those cores, cores is going to be better uh, because, because that we can, can consume, consume less, less amount, amount of energy, energy while satisfying, satisfying the, the, the user, user right? right? But on, on the, the other, other hand, hand, if the load, load is, is very high, high 
which means that, that if you jump, jump or running a play, play game, game on your laptop, laptop well, well, the, the full compilation, compilation then, then achieving, achieving the high performance should be the primary goal of scheduling. But, but in, in the medium, medium low, like, like let's say 70%, 70% right? right? Just, just running, running a casual, casual game or, or just, just a, a compiler, a, a module compilation, compiling, compiling pop -up files, files. Then, then it is really, really important to balance, balance the performance of consumption, consumption, like, like uh, using, using the quote consumption feature. feature. So, so having, having this in mind, the, the, it, 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 this, this the observation, observation uh, actually, actually triggers, uh, uh, make me the, the, the idea, idea of the autopilot mode in the RAVD. So, so basically, autopilot mode dynamically, dynamically adjusts the poor selection, selection policy according, according to, to the system-wide system CPU utilization. So the system, system is likely to load it. it. We we gonna, gonna, the RAVD is going, going to run in the policy mode. mode. So, Actively, actively utilize the little cores and SM cores first up to some, some certain point. point. And then, then this system is the highly loaded, loaded then, then the LAVD actually, actually performs the core selection, selection policy, policy to fully utilize all the cores, cores and, and to raise to the idle state. state. And in, in, the, the, in the middle, we, we LAVD, LAVD is going to run, run in the balance mode, mode what, what it call, call, and, and basically allocate the minimal number of cores using the whole consumption feature, to, to, which serves the load, and, and classify the, the Workload, workload into, into the performance, performance critical, critical one and the not performance critical one. one. So, so try, try to utilize uh, as, as many, many little cores as possible, possible to save, save the power, power right? right? So, so that's, that's basically the autopilot auto mode. mode. So, so in, in summary, the, the LAVD really has, has the two, two ideas, ideas in terms of to save, save the battery, uh, battery consumption. consumption. One, one is the core compaction and the other one is the autopilot mode. So, so that's, that's the core, that, that covers, covers the core idea, idea of LAVD scheduling algorithm. algorithm. And, and let's uh, have some performance, performance comparison with the default EEVF uh, schedule. I'm, I'm not claiming that, that the LAVD is always better than the EEVF, but, but the, at least in the, in the gaming scenario, especially in the Steam Deck, that the we we actually see a lot of performance improvement over the EEVF with uh, with, with uh, uh, less uh, uh, strict, strict, which, which I'm this, this is the one of the race uh, performance in game, game benchmark, benchmark result of the one of the racing game. game. So, so as you can, can see here, here right? So, so LED LED will will achieve achieve a little bit higher frame per second, second with, with a less, less stutter count. count. And, also and also the power consumption, consumption is a little bit lower. lower. And, and this, this is the triple play game. game. And the another one is that the other old game like a Tomb Raider. So since, since the, the game, game itself does, does not consume the, a, lot of, a, a lot of CPU cycle, cycle it, it is easy to achieve 90 frames per second. second. But the, the LAVD uh, actually achieves the uh, uh, lower power consumption. consumption. So, so, so that's, that's the uh, purpose of the uh, entire LAVD uh, algorithm and, and the experimental results. I wanted want to bring down uh, some, some of the discussion and the questions uh, during, during the session, session or, or even after the session, session through, through the metric chat or the office hours. hours. So the one, one is that the, the, what other factors, factors should you consider in making, making scheduling decisions for the latency with the constructive workload like games? games. Right? right? We, we uh, uh, in case of LAVD, LAVD, so far, the, the wake, wake, uh, wake, wake frequency, or, or frequency or the blocking, blocking or wake frequency is the major, major factor, but, but what else we should consider? That's, that's the, the one thing. thing. And, and another, another one is that, so far, even though LAVD, LAVD is uh, motivated by, by the game, game workload, right? right? But, but there, there is too, too, not too much specialization for the, the uh, Linux, Linux graphics graphic stack, stack, Wine, Windows, Windows emulation, emulation layer, and the game engine. So, so we might need uh, more, more specialization for to achieve better, better performance and lower, lower latency. latency. And, and the co co we, we found that the autopilot and core consumption is pretty really useful features, features to the uh, gamers, gamers and, and the laptop users. And, and what, what other scheduler features, features are needed? So, so that's, that's not something that, that we do, I'd, I'd like to discuss. discuss. And, and lastly, I also, I also wanted, wanted to discuss the LAVD is not, not heavily, heavily tested on the uh, other, 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 other than, than the game workload, but the, the, the design seems to be might, might be good, good for the other server workload, workload. So, so do we, we work, is it, it, it might be worse, worse. It, it, it might, might or might, might not be worse to try, try for the, the broader, broader workload that the, the beyond the game, game workload. workload. 
That's, That's all, all I, I have, have and, and I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, just one comment, be, be really fast with questions because we are plenty over time. So I was thinking to do the break now, but I don't know. But Joel, you got just a couple of questions. I think Joel raised the hand first uh, and someone back there, maybe, yeah, you just fight for the question. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, so my question is, uh, it's kind of related to your second bullet. So in uh, CFS, I'm not sure about EV, I think with EVDF2, the nice value, uh, the, the weight of the task reduces the, the latency of the task as well. Uh, like it has to wait for shorter time on the run queue and, and so forth. So um, is there any way you could use that information from the gaming stack as well, other than just the weight wake frequency to uh, decide the latency criticality? And then, Aww. you know, so that way you have some, uh, some hints from user space about what's latency critical as well, and you don't have to just keep, uh, you know, measuring. Uh, you could measure, but also use that information together. Oh, that's, that's really, really insightful, insightful question, question and good question. question. So, so currently, we just only consider the weight and blocking or the weight frequency. So currently, no. no. But, but I actually, I actually consider, consider, I actually plan, plan to explore further, further for example, in games, games that the frame needs to be displayed in 60 or 90 frames per second, second rate. rate. So, so which basically means that the older tasks, tasks which, which are related, related to the, the graphics pipeline, pipeline Need, need to, to uh, execute for, for some certain periodic periodics, right? right? So, so that, that kind of information, information can be encoded and, and somehow delivered to the, the, the scheduler, scheduler so we so can, we can make, make a better deadline, deadline management. management. So, so currently, sure that is currently, currently no, but, but, I'm, but, but I'm, I'm actually considering and improving the plan to improve LAB to that effect. Thank you for the good question. question. Does it answer your question, Joel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. But yeah. basically, the the deadlines, but also the weights, well, whatever you get from the user space, yeah, you can use it as well. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah. 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 If if I understand correctly, you have uh, core compaction and you have latency sensitive workload, right? How do they work with each other? For example. When you have core compaction, you have probably some tasks which are already running and you are still stacking on top of it. Isn't your latency going to get hurt there? That's, that's, the, that's, that's a very, very good question. question. And, and that's, that's the, exactly, exactly what, what I worried. worried. When, when I'm slightly, slightly skeptical when, when I actually, actually start started implementing the core compaction. But, but the, uh, in results, uh, results uh, I, found I found that the, uh, we actually ran, ran a lot of benchmarking, benchmarking the with, with core compaction and without core compaction. But, but the, the result, result is that, that the with and without core compaction, the result, latency result, and latency distribution is almost identical. So, so it, it does, does not, not it does, does not affect heavily, heavily but, but the main reason is that, that the, we basically wanted to the keep, keep the, the core utilization, utilization below 50% utilization. utilization. That, that basically, basically means that, that the very likely the core, core is going, going to be idle, idle the, the, in the, the half percent, percent of the chance, chance right? right? So, so I, think I think that's, that's the, the reason that, that the core, core contention does not hurt the, the latency, latency too much. much. Maybe it's because of it's SMT2, so maybe the numbers kind of mix, makes it for the best case, right? Yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Chang Wu. Thank you for the good questions. And now I think it's time for the break. Uh,